we're gonna take this spare rib and we're gonna trim it into a St. Louis rib. First thing I wanna do before I trim out, before I do anything is I wanna trim it out and get all the miscellaneous loose fat and meat off the actual rib. So it's got a nice uniform look to it. On the back side here, as we flip it over, you're actually looking at the diaphragm that has to be removed, or flat meat a lot of time it's referred to. And we do wanna remove that from the rib. And the reason for this is, this piece of meat will cook much, much quicker than the rest of the ribs because it's on the back side of the rib. And it'll have a tendency to overcook and almost get chewy on you, or just get real, um, it'll get overcooked and it'll dry up on you. So most commonly it's removed and usually your chefs or cooks will take it and throw it in their soup or their stew or something else that they're preparing with pork. But that meat is definitely usable. Um, at this point, we're gonna take any other loose meat that we see on the back side here and clean it up. A little bit of this here is not gonna hurt anything, that's fine. The other thing we wanna do now is get this membrane removed, just like we did on the back ribs. Okay, all we're gonna do is try to get underneath here, get a spot that we can grab it. And as I've done in the past, we'll get some paper towels or something, needle nose pliers, whatever you wanna use, something that you can grip that membrane with. And then you just kinda of get your hands on it and you pull it back. And it should come right off the back side of the rib. It's very important you remove this membrane because this membrane is more or less like a silver skin. It will not cook, it will not dissolve in the cooking process. So it'll stay on the meat and it'll be very, very chewy. And that's something we don't want, it's very undesirable. Um, at such time, when you got the whole back cleaned up, we want to flip it back over. We're going to look for any other miscellaneous meat that may be coming off or really, you know, from uh, the standpoint of just, again, making everything look uniform and clean. We want to clean it all up. If you have any excess fat in any areas like this, you can trim a little bit of that off if you'd like. But again, a little extra fat like this type of fat, your soft fat is fine because that will dissolve in the cooking process on the smoker. It'll actually just drip away and melt into the meat and add additional flavor to the meat and help keep it moist and tender. So there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of what you'd call like kernel fat or top fat. You just don't want that silver skin because that will not come off. Now when you're looking at the front top side of the rib here, you'll see kind of the natural curve. When you see a St. Louis rib at the store, what you're gonna do is you're gonna see a squared rib, and we're gonna make a cut right along here to remove what we call the brisket bone. The brisket bone basically is what you'd see in a restaurant as rib tips in your average barbecue restaurant. You'll see it sometimes in sports bars. All that is is the top piece off the spare rib, which now you're turning it into a St. Louis rib. So really the only difference between a spare rib and a St. Louis rib is removing this brisket bone and soft bone. And we're pretty much just cutting our soft bone out and our flat meat, like so. It's a little bit towards the top here. It can be a little tough to get through, but if you get your knife in there and you got a nice sharp knife, it should cut through smoothly, like so, okay? This then becomes your brisket bone or rib tips. Usually this is gonna be seasoned and smoked whole, which we'll show you as well, in the same way that you would do your ribs. The difference is after this is cooked, you're just gonna chop it into chunks, you'll put it in a basket and serve it as a rib tip type product. Excellent, excellent product. As you can see, it's loaded with meat. Very, very tasty piece of meat. Um, very underestimated piece of meat in the barbecue world. Okay, then that's gonna leave you here with the St. Louis rib. Now what we're gonna wanna do is kinda clean this up and trim it out and make it look a little nicer. On the tail end of the spare rib, you'll see this flat meat, okay? Which really has no bone or anything behind it. We usually cut that off and trim it up. And the reason for doing that again is we want uniformity in the thickness of the actual rib, which is gonna help in the cooking process to make sure that it cooks evenly, which is what we're going for. So we're actually gonna take this very, very last bone down here and probably just cut it out and clean this up on the end to give it a nice uniform look. See how that squares up and it looks a lot nicer? This you can add to your rib tips and smoke it with your rib tips. So that being said, we look pretty clean on that side and that side. Maybe just take a little bit more off this bone here to kind of make it look a little bit more uniform. And that should give you a real nice looking spare rib, which is what we're going for, or a St. Louis rib. So again, you can see where we came from on this. We went from a full spare rib. Let me do this right side up, sky, sorry. That right? So we went from a full spare rim to cutting off the flap, cutting off the soft bone, creating our brisket bones, and then coming up with our true St. Louis style rib. Now we're going to take this and season it and prep it for the smoke.